Lindsay, thank you so much for that introduction. Guys, uh, welcome here, welcome. It's so good for you to be here. I know you had lunch and you're probably feeling that little bit tired right now because you've just probably had Subway or Chipotle or something like that. So what we'll do to wake you guys up, on the count of three, I'm gonna get you guys to freak out, stand up, clap, cheer, and if you're watching at home, do the exact same thing. No more, no problem, no one's watching you right now. So on the count of three, clap, cheer, freak out. One, two, three, go for it! <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I just want to say I do hold the record for the quickest standing ovation in B&H depth of field history, so thank you very much for that. It's a wonderful thing. Guess what my job is today? My job is to make you obsessed with light, so I'm talking about the luxury of light. Here's what most of us do. When perhaps we haven't been taught properly, maybe we're inexperienced, we always look for the location first. Put your hand up if you do that. You're going out on location, you're photographing a wedding, photographing a portrait. You look for that nice wall, that nice tree, that nice fountain, and it's all about that. And don't worry, I'll fix it up afterwards in Photoshop. Many of us, and we, perhaps all of us, are guilty of that when we start. And people say, well, Jerry, why did you start off shooting weddings? In fact, I, I shot my first wedding at the age of 20. That was five years ago. No, that was 25 years ago. I shot my first wedding. Because of wedding photography, I actually really photograph anything and everything to do with people. Because people often consider weddings as the arse end of, I don't know if I can say that, but the arse end of the professional photography world. I believe it's probably the most meaningful. When you shoot a wedding, what are you shooting? You're shooting portraits, fashion, detail shots, whatever. Now think about it. With a wedding, take the veil off, it's a portrait. Take her clothes off, it's boudoir. Get her pregnant, it's pregnancy photographs. Have a child, it's newborn. Let them grow up, it's children. You are doing every genre when you are photographing a wedding, wouldn't you agree? So what I'm getting at is don't discount the idea of it, and I'm telling you right now that what we do for a living is actually incredibly important. With every day and every death, what we do for a living appreciates in value. Would you agree? I want everyone in this room right now to think about the most important photograph that you own. Think about the most important photograph that you own. I want you to think about it. What is it? Who is it? When did it happen? Think about it. Is it a person that's passed away? Is it something that, maybe a moment in time that you were never happier? Maybe it was a milestone. Can you think of the photograph? Put your hand up if you can think about it. Now, if you gave it to me right now, and I did this with it, and it was the only copy that existed, what would you do? You'd punch me, right? You'd kill me. Are you telling me that a piece of paper is worth killing for? Maybe worth dying for even? And then someone comes to me and says, Jerry, what should I charge? Well, I believe what's priceless tomorrow should be expensive today. That's a good hashtag, do that. <laughs> what's priceless tomorrow should be expensive today. I also charge what I charge based upon how much, how much do I have to make to be happy to spend quality time away from my wife? There are so many things. In fact, I was watching Lindsay earlier today um, while I was in my pajamas, when I was in my towel, when I got dressed. Lindsay did a great job of preparing you guys for an incredible career in photography. So thank you for being an incredible ambassador for our industry. As far as lighting is concerned, your job is to become obsessed with light. And you might think, well, what does light mean? Well, Jerry lights light, it's lighting you. It's fine, that's easy. Just, I love it, in fact, when it's overcast because it's like one big softbox, just put them there. There is a direction of light. What's the direction of this particular light right here? This was one light source, what God gave us, the sun hitting the white piece of wall and coming back on her face. And she looks flawless. No, it wasn't in Photoshop that she looked flawless. The lighting did that. I don't care what lighting I use. I often hear people say I'm a natural light photographer, which basically means hashtag, I don't know how to use flash. <laughs> Would you agree? I don't care what style you do, go for it. There is a style for every market and a market for every style. I find so many photographers, we're all talking about each other and who's the best and who's the, this style and whatever. It's like saying, who is the best singer in the world? For you, it might be Stevie Wonder. For me, it might be James Brown. It does not matter. The fact is we're doing what we love and we have clients. Here, this is basically full sun. And I love it, beautiful, full sun, very dramatic. And often the lighting the location, the subject matter, 
What they're wearing will tell you what to do. Do you think this would be a soft and pretty image? It's very, very edgy. So when you think of edgy, you think of harsh sunlight, fantastic. When you think of a wedding and a soft moment, very, very playful, open the door of the house and all of a sudden we've got this beautiful light sort of flooding in. So it's playful, the lighting is telling you, be playful. You have to listen to the environment, listen to what's going on. In fact, here in New York, uh, Cipriani's, who's photographed at Cipriani here? Uh, across the road from Grand Central Station. And I was there at the wedding and I finished at about 10, 11 o'clock and the couple said, Jerry, thank you very much. We're gonna go to an after party. Um, you've been wonderful, wonderful, great. Hugs, kisses, and I'm like, I've got one more shot. Who's ever said that in their career? One more shot, right? And after one more shot, there's one more shot. And after that shot, there's one more shot. And if you're Greek, Australian, American, there's one more shot. So I said to the couple, I would, I've got an idea for a photograph. We have to end the wedding this way. I would love the disheveled background, you guys in the foreground, just candlelight, let's do it. Jerry, we love you, but just no. Help me, help you. How many times have you said that? People don't know what's good for them, would you agree? They don't know. Then I said to them, I'll tell you what, go to the after party, if I'm still sitting here when you come back, you promise to take the photograph. They said yes, great. They came back at 1.30 in the morning. We were still there, much to the demise of my, my wife and my assistant at the time. 1.30, they came back and they shocked. They said, you're still there? I said, yes. So we did the photograph. This is the shot. Now, guess what? You guys sounded like minions then for a second. You went, oh, Bella. This photograph, they ended up ordering as a 40 by 60 and a panorama and a wedding album. It made me $1,500, if not for the love for the... For the money, don't be embarrassed about saying that word. You can be a starving artist or you can be a thriving artist. How many people in this room know someone who is nowhere near as good as them? Seems to be making all the money. Put your hand up. It's like they, it's under your skin. You just hate their guts. You see them everywhere. They're everywhere. You go to a vendor, they're already on the top of the list. You go here, they're already on top. They're just everywhere. And they're really bad photographers. That is genius. You should be learning from these people. You shouldn't be thinking, oh, damn them. Well, if you're a great photographer and you can learn marketing, you should be better still. Learn from these people. Wedding just recently. I'm thinking, what do I do here? I love, who hates detail shots? Put your hand up if you're a wedding photographer and you hate detail shots. I don't know about you, but I would rather spend half an hour more photographing family rather than wax, candles, chair covers, things that are meaningless. And that's why I love the, the initiative of love stories. I think it's fantastic. We're celebrating love. We're celebrating stories. We should be celebrating more meaningful photography, don't you think? So my suggestion is when you are photographing detail shots, give it a heartbeat. Let me call, say that in American. Give it a heartbeat, okay? <laughs> You have no idea the problems I have in this country by ordering food, and they have no idea what I'm saying. I'll say, can I have a Diet Coke? What? Can I have a Diet Coke? What? May I have a Diet Coke? Straight away they get it. But anyway, going back to the detail shots of the heartbeat, if you have to photograph detail, give me a presence of the human form. It makes it more sexy and more beautiful, more interesting, more meaningful. Think about the inverted bust shot that we do of a dress. Who's done the inverted bust shot of a dress? You hang the dress up on a hanger, you put it on top of a door, and the dress, there's no body in it, and the bust just inverts, and you take it, oh my God, it's wonderful. No, it sucks. <laughs> Does it not? So what I want you to do is give your detail shots a heartbeat. I wanna see the reception venue in all its glory, but give it, make it more meaningful for me. How many times have you been to a, a, on a dance floor? and you've got the DJ lights going like this, and you can't expose for nothing. No genius in the world can expose for that perfectly all the whole night. And I'm like, I go up to the DJ, I say, can you just point the lights like about there? He says, no problem. In the meantime, the groom had such a great body, he took his shirt off. I would too if I had a great body right now. I would be naked right now if I had a great body. All right, this is the shot that we did. But isn't it fun? So far, all these are different light sources. I don't want you to be a strobist. I don't want you to be a natural light photographer. You are a photographer. You paint with any friggin' light. If it illuminates, use it. This one was with one strobe. One strobe above her head, 
And this reminds me of a dream that I once had. No, this was five <laughs> This is one girl that we actually photographed many different ways and we built it the way we did. Now, lighting. In fact, really, this seminar should not even be called the luxury of light. It really should be called this. It's the luxury of shadows. It's the luxury of being able to subtract light because when you add shade, it adds depth, dimension, form, beauty. There are so many ways that we can subtract light and really it drips luxury, absolutely drips luxury on the person that we're photographing. So if you don't understand what light is or the direction of where to go and what to do, I want you to think of light like water. Americans, water. <laughs> think of light like water. Why water? Now let's, let's, let's discuss this. If, if you had a big shower head, this big, you know when you go to those luxury hotels and, and, and there's like little raindrops, this big, and it was close to you, would that be soft on your skin or hard on your skin? Soft or hard? Soft. So therefore, the bigger the light source, the softer it is. If I had a little pin, a little hose like this, lots of pressure, as in lots of power, and I pointed it at you, would it be soft or hard? Hard, hard. So it's gonna be contrasty, right? So when you think of light like water, you begin to be able to understand how to sculpt it, how to manipulate it, how to, how to make it mold and feel and how to describe something. It is not some airy fairy thing that is just hanging around somewhere. It is such a beautiful thing that you need to understand. This was an ordinary downlight. I took this like 10, 15 years ago, I think it was, I can't remember now. This one ordinary downlight, and most people do this shot, and the problem is if you point the toe, bend the knee, slide the heel back, and then do this, and she has a decent sized bust, that's gonna cause a shadow underneath. In other words, if she was in the shower white now, and her bust was bigger, and the, and, the, and the water was like this, the rest of her body's not gonna get wet, not get lit. So you have to lean her back a little bit in this situation, for example. I don't normally shoot this on the broad side of the face or split light, someone like this, but when you have a pretty face and symmetrical and everything broader is actually not a bad thing. Very, very proud to represent Nikon in the, uh, the D850 campaign. And I've got to say, I work my butt off, not only in the wedding industry, I changed the game a little bit, my own game last couple of years to really start to shoot a lot more fashion. And I represented the, the fashion and the wedding industry with the Nikon D850, their landmark camera. And this was, this was it. Now, this was a 105 millimeter 1.4 lens, the first of its kind in that combination. Look at that little sliver of that depth of field there. You've got that beautiful highlight there as well. Is there a dentist next door? What's going on there? Oh my goodness. Maybe they're cleaning a dirty sensor. Okay, but you see that little, de that plane of focus on the eyelid there and the lips is just such a beautiful thing. How important is that little gap between their noses? How important is that gap above the ear? How important is that little hint of highlight in the back of him? Nothing is by fluke. After a while, it's, it's funny, they say that the harder you work, the luckier you get, but the harder you work, sometimes the force becomes strong with you, don't you think? Have a look at the subtlety of this photograph. This is the bride. Now, what did I do? I subtracted light. I put her more into, into the car. So I got a, a bit of vignette on her forehead. And what did I do? I could not get the crease off her face, no matter what I did. And we're running out of time. I'm like, I'm gonna use it. Now look at it, squint a little bit. Doesn't it look like a teardrop coming down her eye? Isn't it amazing how sometimes you can actually use it to your advantage and have some fun? Look at that light tickle her back. Look at that light in the left and right hand side and how important is it that little bottom of the actual chandelier is perfectly framed left and right with those frames. As I was shooting it, I'm like, oh man, this, like, you know how you just can't stand perfectly still. So I'm like, just you sway normally. I, I took the photograph. Most of us would have turned on the chandelier and guess what would have happened? The chandelier, of course, would add a bit of warm light, no big deal, but your eye would have gone a lot to that chandelier. So it would have been obvious for me to do that, but this is what I ended up loving. And people ask me, Jerry, oh my God, what, how, what light did you use with this? It's what God gave us through a window, just window light. I turned her body away. What I want you to do is this, guys, is when you go to a window, in any light source for that matter, I want you to pretend like your subject is on a turntable and just turn them around. In fact, buy a turntable. It's big enough that can hold a, hold a body and just go brrrr. And you start to learn where that light falls and what's more complementary. In fact, it's more instinctual. I can talk about ratios all day. That's gonna confuse the hell out of you. My suggestion, 
Stop where the light it's, looks flattering. Simple. All right, let's keep on going. This is what I often do, most of all, especially with the female form, especially with brides. And that is, I turn the body away from the light and turn the face back in. What does that mean? If this is a bedroom window, a lot of us, what we'll do, there's a light source, we turn the bride towards the window. Great, beautifully lit. But it's bigger and broader and it's not as flattering. If she was thinner, that might be a good way to do it. I'm suggesting turn the body away from the light source until you see a shadow in the middle of the body, middle of the dress, on the cleavage, and turn the face back in. And now I'm shooting or creating the short side, the narrow side, the sexy side, call it something. What do you think I wear a beard? I have a short side with me in any lighting everywhere I go. So I <laughs> point the toe, slide the heel back, bend the knee, shift the butt back, shoulders back, chest forward, and lean, uh, don't look sexy, and turn the face that way. And it works in so many situations. This girl had a modest bust, but turning her body away, I had that beautiful shadow on the bust line, that shadow, that beautiful luxury shadow on the actual shoulder, and then turned her face into light. Same thing when she's sitting down. See, when you photograph a girl, whether she's standing or sitting front on, you are photographing her at her widest, at her widest. So I want to create shape, depth, dimension, and form in another way, because I'm not doing it with my with my angle, I have to do it in another way, which means lighting has to come from the side, which gives me those shadows, which describes her shape. So go down, turn her face, beautiful. Even in the sun, it works exactly the same way. This is with the D810, just before the D850 campaign. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's all you gotta do, turn the body, turn the face back in, beautiful, light and shade. Lindsay, I saw your shoot this location. How fun was that location, right? Crazy. Next shot was one of my favorite photographs. In fact, it works exactly the same way. I walked into this location. Who's been to an environment that was incredible and you get all excited and you get there and you think, well, where do I start now? You know what you do? Where the best light is. Now, location-wise, if it's a great location, like if you're going to the Taj Mahal and it's bad light, make it work, damn it. You're gonna make it work. But don't always bring out your strobe. I think there's a huge influx of photographers now that understand strobe, but don't understand when you just take it away. I have no problem. All I'm saying though is, I see a wow shot with strobe, right? Bang, strobe, underexpose the sky, bang the flash, beautiful. It's amazing, I love it. But then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you have a whole wedding album of wows. It's no longer a wow when it's all wow. Think of your favorite car chase movie scene. Think of like Ronan or one of those movies. Can you imagine that whole movie was a car chase scene? Give me a symphony. Give me the highs, give me the lows. Make me laugh, make me cry, make me hold my breath. Do you see what I'm getting at? This one here, this was, it was really tough because she was lying on a dress. Well, I made her lie on a dress and she was buried. Her head was buried right into the actual the veil. I had, a, had to roll up a towel and bring it underneath to bring her face up. But what am I doing? I'm turning her body away from the light source and her face back in. There was natural light coming through. If you've seen me in a video doing this, I had to hang over the balcony like this. I was literally had my feet off the ground and my wife was holding my belt so I wouldn't die. Um, but if you look at it, all the dissecting points are exactly where they need to be. There's a wine decanter. If you're a bit of a wino and a drunkard, you can see that. Um, there's a keyhole in there. It may look like a girl having a bubble bath, or maybe it's a, a metaphor for an angel just sleeping on a, on a cloud. But all I'm saying, guys, is that light, you have to become obsessed with it, and then you can master it. But Jerry, what is good light? What, is that, what does good light mean? In fact... I'm gonna tell you what good light means as well as what good posing means. Good light, good posing means it's either flattering and or it helps communicate what you as a photographer, as an artist, are trying to communicate to the view of the photograph. If you communicate more effectively, it makes you more of an artist because if you were to define art, what would you define it as? Art is a form of communication, a feeling. So the more you communicate with light and pose, rather than just do pose number 23 with bride number 44 and location number 27, you are a more effective communicator, you are more of an artist. Agreed? Let's become artists. 
Now you might think, well, Jerry, what's an example of maybe a photograph that it wouldn't be flattering, but it helps communicate the message? A, a couple of years ago, I did a project and um, on, uh, I basically was inspired by the movie Sin City. Who's seen the movie Sin City? Incredible, right? You see that movie, you think, wow, I, I have to do something with that inspiration. So I did what I called um, damsel causes distress. This photograph, would you call this flattering? No, it's edgy, it's got that film noir look. This whole shoot was done with four ice lights. But it's amazing though that light doesn't even have to illuminate the subject for it to describe something. Recently at a wedding, the, 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 the groom says to me, Jerry, I'm done, thank you very much. See you later, love what I saw in the back of the camera, we'll call it a day. I'm like, dude, we haven't even started photographing yet. He says, no, nah, it's fine, I said, in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year, you are not going to care about this extra half an hour that you had to photograph. You're going to care about how beautiful these photographs are and what you'll be missing. Guys, hang in there with me. He goes, I'll give you 10 minutes. I'm like, okay. We ended up, the finale was this shot. How important is that little gap between his arm? How important is that I, that I bring a leg over on the groom? See, when we describe a female form, we often talk about the S-curve, right? The S-curve. When we talk about the guy, it's either a V or a C. This is a V. What defines a female form? Shape, curves. What defines a male form? Chest, shoulders. But if, if I stand shoulder length apart, that you have nothing to compare my shape to. So if I walk, not in a feminine way, then I get that beautiful shape. How important is that gap underneath his chin and that beautiful detail? Recently at a wedding, we were having, a, having the couple dance around and it was funny because we were going to go up to the car park of a building to see this beautiful overview of the city and on the way to the car park, I saw this orange wall and I'm like, man, that would be really, really fun to shoot right there. I think most of us, if we saw an orange wall and it was full sun, we probably would have got the bride right up against the wall, turned her face to the, to the light and had some fun. Then I thought, I'm seeing these trees dance. The, the trees were dancing. There were a silhouette of dancing trees. There's my idea. Add a bit of movement, and we get this shot. And how did that wind just conveniently sort of blow up there? As I sort of got them to dance. They didn't do it on their own well enough. So then I sort of kept on moving until I found the position that I wanted, and then I just got her to kick her heel, and then I shot it at the peak of the movement. You don't have to have light on the subject to describe the shape and the form. At a recent workshop, um, I was there on that translucent piece of glass right behind me. This was the actual um, the business center of the hotel. And we're there, and my, my, my students were saying, what on earth are you going to be photographing here? So they thought, OK, maybe I'm just going to shoot a silhouette of them. And then I saw the iMac on the left-hand side, and I thought, let me just take a picture of the iMac along with the real couple, and we got this in camera. Wouldn't that be cool to end off the wedding album with and extend the spread, like extend the black into nothingness? Wouldn't it be, this be great to do a three meter panel, uh, three, uh, 10 feet panel across on the hallway of the, of the wedding? What I want you to do too is you'll get to a point where as you become more experienced, you become more sophisticated. In other words, good enough isn't good enough anymore. Like, is that where you're at now? It's, it's where we're all at. I think a lot of it's got to do with maybe ignorance. We don't know any better. Laziness, we're just a bit tired. I'm saying is that sometimes you just have to work that little bit harder and harder and harder. That's why I respect this incredible woman in front of me, Lindsay, because I've seen her just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And that's what I love is artists that inspire me that just, no, 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 I'm not happy where, even though I'm really, really friggin' good, I'm, I know I can get better. And that's why photography is incredible, because there's no such thing as your best. And that's what the spice of life is, this challenge, yeah? This shot, my wife was turning 30 plus 10 last year. And I'm like, what else am I going to give her for a birthday other than a beautiful photograph and a shoot? So we, we get this beautiful dress, and she's, where am I going to wear this dress? It's a little bit booby. I'm like, you're going gonna, to gonna buy it for me, your husband. I don't care if you wear it one night and I just look at you all night, but we did the shoot with it. And there she was, looking incredible. Turn the body away from the light, face back in. It's overcast. It's quite soft. Now, as a guy photographing this, I don't know whether this is for learning purposes or you're going to take this home and put it on your phone. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to talk you and I after. That's all I'm saying. <coughs> no, it's fine. It's all good. All right. <laughs> 
So, it's so funny, like, language and the way you talk about things and, and it's often the way you, you can speak to someone. Like, the other day I was shooting a model and she was really, really nervous. And I'm like, I'm gonna play with her a little bit. And she was so uptight and I'm like, ever since I've seen you, I've wanted to photograph you naked. <laughs> she freaked out and I'm like, I think you get me wrong, I'm gonna be naked. So she laughed and we were fine. And my wife was there, of course, and everyone was there having fun. But anyway, don't say that at home. I'm Australian. I can get away with anything. All right. So I take this shot. There is a direction of light. How do you see that? Do you see the shadows? But it's softer. I needed more contrasts. Because what is the actual lighting and what she's wearing and her look suggest? Does it look, is it soft and pretty? It's edgy and sexy, right? So I need sexy and edgy lighting. So I was going to bring out my Profoto B1. I bring it out, but then, oh, and the sun comes out, fantastic, thank you. Then we get this shot. Then I'm like, all right, she's looking fierce, but what is the dress telling me? The dress is saying to me, Jerry, it needs movement. This is what happens. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, hand on the hip, get more legs showing. And then open up, that's it. Beautiful, love that. You're gonna hold this with your right hand, with your left hand, shoot the dress away, and do this when you're ready. Now it's even more awkward that you're not photographing it. So either you're, <laughs> either you're paranoid or you don't think this is a good photo. I want you to take it and then we'll discuss whether you should delete it afterwards or not. All right. But you see the difference between good, better, and best, right? Big difference, big difference. All right, guys, if you indulge me for 30 seconds, I wanna give away something. Are you guys cool with that? But I need 30 seconds of your time, is that cool? All right, everyone bring out their device. If you're watching at home, you can play too. And if you're watching at home, do not close your tab because you're not gonna be able to listen to me. If you're watching at home, click on another tab. If you're here in the room, go to your local browser. And what I want you to do is go to jerryjerryjerry.com. Why Jerry, Jerry, Jerry? Because I grew up with a Brady Bunch. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I thought it'd be fun. If you don't know what that means, that means you are young. Okay, so jerryjerryjerry.com, watching at home as well. This is what I'm going to give away. I'm very, very excited. I have never, one of the things I've given away before, but another thing I haven't. What I'm going to give away is one year subscription to my online training site. Guys, I'm one of the very first photographers to ever teach online. I celebrated my 10 year anniversary of online training. If you like the way I teach, if you wanna grow with me and learn with me, there's over, there's hundreds of episodes of watching me shoot weddings, portrait, fashion, boudoir, and the business of photography. One of you will win a year subscription to this. Guys, this next one is the big one. This one is going to be, one of you will win, this is coming up next month in a few weeks, one of you will win five days uh, training with Melissa and I at our home studio in Las Vegas. You're playing at home, you can uh, enter this as well. What's gonna happen, my wife will just go in, jump in, she'll pick an email address randomly and email you the details and who's going to win. Five days training, lighting, posing, marketing, business, album design, shooting, selling, you name it. Not gonna waste more time, enter your email address, enter. Guys at home do the same thing. Melissa will give me two email addresses at the end of the show and we're gonna have some fun. In fact, that's the winner right there. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk to you a bit more about lighting in the form of also being able to recognize the creative triggers in any environment. If we saw this environment, this is actually a bridge in Chicago. If you saw this, you'd probably use the reflection, but I've, I've shot with things like this. It's very warped, it's very abstract. It may not be that flattering. But now I start to think more laterally rather than literally, and I'm thinking, what happens if I just go further away from this background and have it out of focus? Then I bring the ice light out, one of my inventions from about five or so years ago, and then I split lighting. Split lighting means light coming from one side, not the other. It's very masculine. It's quite a hard kind of a light source. And then I take this shot. Nothing fancy, nothing amazing, but then I switch my white balance to tungsten, which will turn this light into what? Into blue. And then now, this next shot in camera looks like it could have been a scene from the movie Blade Runner. Simply by changing my white balance, that's what I'm getting at, guys, is that sometimes we just think a little bit literally and we also think always the same. If you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, you are a, what? You are? Obsessed. 
insane. So you are insane to think you'll get different results. My suggestion is you've got to play. You have to play. Then I add the girl in. I'm like, wait a second, I, I want a dramatic. I've got this one light source. I don't want to make it too complicated for myself. What do I do? So I keep him there. I bring the light closer to him. I use the light bouncing off his face back on her face. He gets hard light. He's a dude. She gets soft light, feminine. Then we get this beautiful combination of hard and soft. And then you just crop differently in camera. And this could be perhaps a movie poster. What I'm suggesting is, guys, is you have to play. You have to play. Last year, I made a commitment to myself that I want to do a, a practice session at least once a month, a fun shoot once a month. Um, Lindsay recommended twice a month. Man, I'm going to try to do it once a week, just for myself, just for myself, and just play. And I've even got a mannequin at home. If I want to try a different lighting situation, I put the whole mannequin there and play, and then now I can get a human involved. So I don't have to waste time with a human, you know? Sometimes the location is so obvious, there is an arrow pointing to where the couple should be standing, and you totally... <laughs> Miss it. So you go to a car park, a car park, and then you want to go to the reception venue, and you're walking your couple to the reception venue. You could do one more shot. You could sell one more spread. You could. So I get the couple underneath. Why, why do I look at that? There's a shaft of light on the ground because there's a skylight where the car park is. I'd need an excuse to get the bride's face upwards, so I do. And then we actually do this shot. And then we have a little bit of that highlight behind it to separate her from the background. What I'm getting at, guys, if nothing else today, if you learn that if, you, if it illuminates, use it, damn it, use it. Use it. How many times have you walked past a situation like this? There's a handrail and there's a beautiful glow underneath. And if you're a photojournalist, you're going to have to wait for the couple to trip, fall, and turn their face into the light, <laughs> which is not going to happen. I have no problem with photojournalism. What I do suggest is if the magic is there, capture it. If it's not, create it. Simple. So what do I do? I get the girl underneath, turn her face into the light. Now we've got a beautiful image. Before you get rid of her from that location, bring him in. Now you've got the spread of an album. This could be a portrait shooter, an engagement session. If it illuminates, use it. Admit it. Put your hand up if you've walked past a street sign like this and didn't even think about the possibility of shooting it with as a light source. Come on, put your hand up. Loud and proud. Now slap your own face. <laughs> if this light source, as you see it, was completely white and there was a Westcott logo or Pro Photo logo and say, use this, you would use it, wouldn't you? I'm suggesting that if it illuminates, use it because, man, it's there for you. That, that, all that was was using that light coming out of that big softbox that was in the environment that was bolted to the ground. Then I'm walking down the subway and I see the fluorescent light. There's the ice light in the environment. And I'm like, I squat down and I basically shoot this image. Something's missing here a little bit. I don't know, the, the expression, I mean, the girl looks good, but it looks like I said, close your eyes and look, just put your chin down. To be honest, what I found more engaging was the actual reflection. I thought, how cool would it be to just get the reflection only? And there's my, could, how cool would that be for a canvas print on the wall as a talking piece? Wall art. How many times have you walked past the building, a silver piece of wall like this and totally ignored it? Many of us. This is just a silver sculpture. But what does that look like? It's a silver reflector, right? So you bring the bride or the girl in the foreground right there, the sunlight, hair light, backlight, the sun hits the wall, goes back on her face. You couldn't get a better two light system than that. Many of us, we overcomplicate what we do. We bring strobes everywhere. We bring light stands everywhere. Now, this is a, this is a discussion and talk for B&H. Yes, buy all the gear in the world, but just know you'll probably end up using a few pieces and, and, you're, and you're happy with it. I'm suggesting know your light and don't be intimidated by it, and it's quite liberating. Off-camera flash. Now, again, guys, in, in 55 minutes or so that we've been talking together, I can't save the world here. Like I said, I'm just trying to give you little bite sizes and give you some inspiration to take home and inspire you to practice. Off-camera flash. Well, I'm walking past in Chicago, and they have, as they have in New York, those manholes with the smoke coming out. I thought, that's really cool. I've always walked past them and never photographed with them. I'm sure Lindsay's done it a thousand times because you, you live here and there's smoke and pollution coming out of all the manholes. I don't really know what's going on, but 
Anyway, well, maybe it's just someone just spraying, you know, that atmosphere aerosol, you know, underneath and it's like, use this. Um, so I, how do I do it? I have one speed light. So I use the, the W, the, you know, the, um, the trigger for the SB5000, the WR18C3PO. I use that to actually, that was a joke. I use that flash to fire and actually illuminate the couple, but illuminate the smoke because smoke looks a lot better when you backlight it. And then we get this shot. That was one speed light right behind. What do I do? I expose for the ambience. I can control it with my exposure, but I can't control basically what, what it's there. Then we play around, we have some fun, maybe do a running shot, and then we sort of got a little bit of mysterious sort of running shot there as well. How many times have you been in a situation like the streets of New York and you didn't know how to get rid of the people? Well, I lay on the ground and I shoot upwards. Here's the problem that most of us do wrong, is when you're laying on the ground shooting wide angle and the, and the, the subject is standing straight, they're gonna look like this. <clears throat> it's gonna look really weird. So what I want you to do is get the couple, the subject, to lean forward like this, and then crop the awkwardness out, and then what will basically happen is you'll correct the perspective, because now we're parallel to the camera. In this case, I was here. I liked the idea of shooting with a Chrysler building. I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have my, my groom or my subject in the shadow? Then I turn my white balance to shade, which makes it warmer. Often when I'm using off-camera flash, I'll switch my white balance to shade, which make my flash look like video light. And then I did this shot. Do you know that he was doing this? And you would not know because I've cropped the awkwardness out. It's fun, right? I did this shot with the Nikon D at 50 campaign, had a ball doing this. Do you see how very subtly she has slightly prettier light? Why? because he turned his face a little bit more towards the camera, the flash hits his face, bounces off her face, and then of course we expose for the ambience first. We turn her body away, so we get that shadow on her bust, and life is good. And people have asked me, Jerry, look, what happens if I'm up shooting during the day? How do I get this kind of result during the day? Well, it's hard. First of all, it has to rain, right? And I did, the backlit shot with rain has, done a mil has been done a million times, I, I'm probably the one that popularized it many, many like decades ago, so I, I feel a bit guilty doing it now myself, but it's fun and couples freak out. Watch this next piece of video, watch, watch what happens. Well, I, need, I need a dark background, otherwise it's not gonna work. So let's go where the trees are. Babe, I wanna get you here. Let's just test a flash. You are gonna get soaked. It's the last shot of the day. You need to look at each other. Without passion in this photograph, it's just gonna be nothing at all. I need you to look at each other like you're, figuring you're hungry and you're each other's meals, <laughs> all right? Look at each other's lips. I want you perfectly front on, and then we're gonna backlight with flash, and as soon as we get it, we're done, okay? All I need is your faces. Now bring your hair behind your ears. Beautiful. I want you to face each other now, and hold each other really close. Your hand on his chest there, darling, and that right hand down. Down. Now, come see how Johnny's closer to me than you. Come closer towards me. Stop. Now, I want you to lean, both of you lean this way. Stop. That's it. Beautiful. Now, chin down a slight touch, Johnny, but don't tilt your head towards me. That's it. Leaning closer. Stop there. Look at each other's lips, guys. Now, that's it. Now, bring your hand up higher, darling. That's it. Chin down, gorgeous. Turn your face towards me, mate, just a little bit. Stop. Go closer together. So how did I take that shot in camera with no Photoshop and we see that? We find the darkest area of our environment. So then I underexpose that background. Now I've got pitch black. Then we black backlit with flash. People ask me, Jerry, do you use manual? I go, no, I, like Nikon has spent millions of dollars working out how TTL works. I, I don't know how it works, it just freaking works. You just put it on TTL, just fire it away and have a look. If it doesn't, add and subtract, but this is all TTL. But do you see how the aesthetics, he, with all respect, there's a they're a different aesthetic. You wouldn't put them together as a couple. So I want a bit softer light to pretty him up a little bit, so to speak. And so what do I do is I bring his, her face closer to me, the light bounces off her face, bounces on him, and aesthetically, we just mesh them in a little bit, don't you think? This is the exact same thing that happened after that shot that I showed you before with those Christmas lights with the D850 campaign. Do you see how, in fact, this was not really planned. I took that shot, then I made them laugh. 
He came close. I managed to grab focus at 1.4 on her. The light hits his face, bounces on her, and then we get that shot. Cool, cool? All right, on-camera flash. Put your hand up if you struggle with on-camera flash. If every hand or at least one, if every hand doesn't go up at least once in their life. Guys, on-camera flash is tough. It is, it's tough. Many of us buy modifiers, we put them on, we do whatever we do. I don't practice safe flash. I like bare bulb usually. That was a joke. All right, so <laughs> let me look at this. If you're a natural light shooter, you might get something like this. Now, you don't have time to do like perfect white balance and using an expo disc and things like that, but with a technique that I'm about to show you, you will get shots like this. And where did I learn these techniques? Well, I shot my first winning at the age of 20. That was 25 years ago. And I shot with the Mamiya RB67. Who, is it? Who shot with an RB67? Okay, we're old. It was, you know what you had to do? 10 shots per roll of film. You would take the shot. Okay, you would click the shutter. You would cock the mirror, and then you would wind. And if someone blinked, it was your fault. Every shot had a Mets flash on it. And I learned how to bounce the flash. I tried everything. I soon realized that if you bounce a flash a certain way, and it's something that you probably have never tried before, you've bounced every way other than what I'm about to show you, that very few people know this technique, and those who know it, like, it's, it's a huge epiphany. This was me. Look how, look how cute I was back then. All right, baby, can you help me out here? Mike, shut the hell up. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna prove this flash technique. Would you call this a difficult environment to photograph in? Yes, it is. All right. So, baby, if you can um, switch, yeah, switch everything, we should be okay. Okay, so if I was in a reception venue like this, this could be a tent that you're in, okay? A tent, uh, it's hard because you've got a little bit of black, you've got obviously the blue ambience and all that kind of stuff. But what I suggest you do is you look at your environment and say, well, where can I bounce off? Now, watch what happens if I flash someone completely front on, okay? So what I'll do first, in fact, let's do this first. If I was in a reception venue like this, what am I gonna expose for? Look around you quickly. What am I gonna expose for? Those blue lights coming up, right? Because that's gonna separate me from the background. So let me just photograph here. We'll just wait until we can actually see the image. Okay, so let's now, let's unmirror. Let me, I'll do that for you. Everybody, my wife, Melissa Guionis, everybody. It's funny, people love me until they meet her, and that's totally fine with me. That's true, it's actually very, you, you, you especially, you know, you, you hugged her a lot longer than you hugged me when we, before the show. All right, that one there. Okay, so, just there, just be fine. All right, guys, so what I did because I've shot in places like this a million times, I guess the exposure, um, it is 2500 ISO, 200 speed f3.5. As I'm getting older, I'm finding I'm not actually going to 2.8 or the widest aperture every time because that's what all the cool kids do. I just, wanna, I just want things sharp. So now I've got my ambience. Now I want to actually bounce off something. Now most of us will... Now, Lindsay, forgive me for what I'm about to do. You can stay right where you are. I am going to... Boom, okay. Now that's full flash, right? I'm on daylight white balance. I'm sorry, Lindsay, you're a beautiful girl, but I can make you look prettier still. So, and you get away with it, if anyone can. And all I'm saying is that that's not conducive of, I believe, professional photography. Now, we could bounce up like this, which a lot of us do. A lot of us could bounce up like this. A lot of us could put actually the card out. A lot of us could actually bend it like this or like this, all right behind. In fact, I shoot with my flash behind most of the reception. But what I wanna show you is this. If we actually flick the flash 90 degrees left or right, I'm telling you, you will get an incredible result, of course, depending on where you're bouncing off. This is tough because we've got black curtains on the side of us. 
and then you think you're bouncing off blue. You're not bouncing off blue. That's just the, the, the blue light hitting the actual walls to make it all sexy and, and beautiful in this room. But we're going to be bouncing off the white wall. So what I want to show you, hey, baby girl, you want to come here be my model? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a, a white piece of wall and then look at the ambient. So baby, can you come down? I know I, I haven't prepared this earlier with our, uh, our room there. So uh, let's just come a little bit off the camera in case they can't see me. So guys, here is, in fact, before we go on, maybe sit down or squat down for a second. Here's the theory. The theory is this. If you are photographing me and I'm, fr I'm facing you perfectly, right, then if you bounce off left or right, you'll be split lighting me. What we want to do is create the short side, create the narrow side, create a bit of depth, dimension and form with one flash. Yes, you can put three light stands up and let, yes, you can bounce them in the corner. But if you're like me, a lot of my weddings are interstate or overseas. I want to carry lights. I normally only carry two speed lights with me, and usually it's always on camera. And this is the exact technique that I use. Are you ready? So what I'm, I'm hoping this will work, because the photograph's going to come up on screen, and this is going to be very terrible if it doesn't work. What's the worst that can happen? We screw up and we fail. When there was a seminar on failure just before. This will be a good lesson in humility. <laughs> All right. So the theory is, if you're facing me, then there's no direction. The minute my face turns this way, the nose is an arrow saying, Jerry, bounce the flash 90 degrees that way. If my face is this way, it's bounce the flash 90 degrees that way. So and now you might say, what happens if someone is completely facing me? We'll take one step to the left and then bounce, and then all of a sudden the nose is in a different direction. Let me prove this to you. Damn, I hope this works. Okay, Melissa, stand up for me. So do you see that little piece of wall there? Those of you at home, there's just basically, there's black curtains being separated, but come this way a little bit. Okay, there's black curtains being separated by pieces of wool. And I apologize in the audience if I'm a silhouette right now, but this will be an effective demonstration. So now, let's go straight on to me, baby. So we're gonna shoot full flash. Let me remind you right now. Okay. 200 speed, F3.5, daylight white balance, 2500 ISO. And there is a beautiful girl <laughs> with bad light and a cheesy smile. OK. But now, let me just uh, show you in light what I'm doing. I'm going to get Melissa's face to turn this way, and I'm going to actually bounce the flash in this direction. You would think that that's not going to touch her at all. But what you have to think, what, like I told you, light is like water. If I get a, like water, and I, or a tennis ball, and I went, shh, ping, ping, it'll hit her face, bang, bang, right? If you go like this or like this, it might hit her. It might sort of flutter around. But hopefully, we will prove to you that with this, we're going to make a, we're going to create the short side of her face. OK, turn your face a bit this way. Tilt. Uh, that's it, just there. And what I'll do is I'll include a little bit of ambience as well. This won't be award winning, but hopefully we'll get some beautiful light. I'm a genius. I oh, know. <laughs> I'm not a genius. It's actually very easy. Watch. Isn't that crazy? It's soft. You would not think that that was flash. Thank you. All right. Wait a second. I'm showing you all these beautiful pictures, and that's the one you decide to clap on? <laughs> all right, baby, come over here. Now you might be thinking, well, Jerry, that was that one piece of wall. That's ridiculous. What happens if you're really, really far away from me like that? Now here's the thing, I don't know if I bounce that way that far away, if, I'm gonna, if the light's going to pick up from you a little bit, or whether I need to add some exposure. I've been in a room like this, 30, 40, 50 feet away, and this will still work. Yes, this will not work with a wider aperture with an ISO of 100. So let's get you away from the, uh, come right that back that way so you, you're not in the spotlights up there. And let's... Hmm. OK, I'm just thinking whether I actually do what I think we should do or prove to you that the light is so far away. I'm going to add a little bit of balance of exposure. I'm going to add 0.7 to my TTL, add a little bit of ambience where the exit sign is as well. Turn more that way, baby girl. That's it, beautiful. No smile here, just nice and soft, nice and passive. Beautiful, hold it. You blinked, but guys. My name is Jerry Gunnis. I'll, I'll be here all week. Okay. 
No, guys, I mean, who, who had a flash epiphany right now? Who had a flash epiphany? Like, I've never seen that technique, never used it before. See, I didn't know that many people did not know this technique. I actually did a Dennis Reggie workshop one day, and he, he taught this technique. I'm like, dude, you do this too? Like, it's crazy that it's just such a simple technique. Just where the nose is pointing, point the flash, it'll go behind. And there's many variations of this. I can't cover them all because of time, but you get the idea. Let me go back to my presentation here to finish up with some really cool stuff because we're off very, very soon. All right. Let me quickly, just before we show you a couple of the, the shots here, finale, I want to read to you, um, guys, the, the winners of these two things. Are you ready for it? I'm going to read to you the winner of the online education. So basically, this will be the winner of 12-month subscription to my training site, 10 years worth of content. Uh, the winner is elsa.boscarella at gmail.com. Are you in the house or you're probably at home? Congratulations. And the workshop, this is a good one. This is three and a half thousand dollars, five, five days of education. You have to fly yourself there, get your own accommodation. But I will teach you for five days. And the winner is uh, J-E-L, that's Jelgin, J-E-L-G-I-N, Jelgin11 at yahoo.com. Congre yep, congratulations. And you know what I love is that everyone reluctantly claps that you didn't win. <laughs> but guys, I just want to let you know you are all winners. You beat millions of sperm to be here tonight. That's all I'm saying. OK. <laughs> did he just say that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Guys, to finish off with, I went to the Taj Mahal last year. And like everybody, believe it or not, I waited like everybody for this shot. I could not believe I'm a professional photographer. And I was waiting in line to take the, the shot that everyone has taken at this location. I'm like, come on, Jerry, like you're better than this. So I said to my tour guide, hey, is there any vantage point that we can actually photograph the Taj Mahal other than this area? There's too many people. Yes, there's a place across the river. So there we were. There was two people there other than us. And I took this shot. We bought Melissa a beautiful dress early in the day. Then all of a sudden, this freakish, freakish sandstorm comes. And this happens. Most of us, when we see this would have happened, then we grab our off-camera flash, would we not? You grab the off-camera flash and we do this. I'm like, oh, what do I do? Maybe I pose her. Ah, oh, no. Then I'm like, I turned my white balance to shade, made the environment even more warm than the sandstorm gave me. Then I had my, uh, my Nikon 170. I put it down. We filmed exactly the moment that I took the following shot. Have a look. It was tough. It was tough. Did you see the flash go off? Did you see that exact moment that I took the photograph? This is the photograph that we got. Thank you, guys. I'm going to finish up with one more photograph and to give you some inspiration. All right. Everyone asked me about this following photograph. I thought I would share it with you today. There was, I was walking past this house with a groom. And as I walked past this house with the groom, I saw his reflection of his face against the overcast sky. I thought, wait a second, how cool would it be for me to photograph his reflection of his silhouette and then have the bride inside the house looking actually through and merge her face in camera, not a multiple exposure, but in camera to get the following shot. Guys, hopefully you are obsessed with light now. If nothing else, I want you to remember one thing. You don't have to be the best. All you have to do is be better than last week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.